What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Bournemouth career mode. This is episode 11 and we're starting on transfer deadline day here. And um, on this deadline day we got a few offers for some of our big players. David Brooks, Porto wanted him for 25 mil. Obviously I have rejected that because we don't want Brooks to leave him because he's one of our best players. And we want to keep him at the club for as long as we can, as long as he keeps playing well and growing. But it is deadline day as you can see and this episode is full, it's jam-packed, full of games. This is why the games are highlights are going to be short and quick as we get off of there for Solanke who I'm not selling as well but yeah we've got four games one against West Ham one against Brighton which I sims one against Villa and one against Man United that's it's quite a jam-packed episode so there's not there's I know there's not usually a lot of highlights in the games but there's going to be less than usual I'm pretty much just going to show the goals and maybe the odd chance or two that we get but um, we do have two hours left of deadline day. We haven't got any signings to make. Obviously, Ribery and Ake have come in in this transfer window as we get another offer for Brooks here. Everyone wants him because he's been our, one of our best players this season. But yeah, that's the end of the deadline day. We only make them two signings, as I said, Brooks and Ake. But we're going to jump straight into this game against West Ham United at the Olympic Stadium. There he is, Dom Solanke, Premier League top goal scorer. He's been on 14 goals for a while now a few episodes so hopefully he can break the deadlock today against West Ham but um, we're going into this game hoping for the win if we do win I think we go above them or we just like a point behind them or something like that I think we're sitting in ninth at the moment which isn't too bad we're hoping for European football as we are knocked out of all the cup competitions and we can get European football if we keep winning and playing well but yeah we do have West Ham at the bowling ground not the bowling ground that's our old one never mind um yeah, we've got West Ham at the Olympic Stadium. They're a decent side, hard to beat at home. But um, I think we'll be all right and we should come away with the three points, hopefully. I'm hoping we do. Right, so Lingard has got the ball here and he's going to place the lanky through. We do have a chance here in the 22nd minute. He's going to ball roll back in and try and go for the far post. But Fabianski does pull off a good save to stop us and we get a corner, but nothing happens from this. As you can see, uh, Kelly just uh, puts it wide, so it doesn't really matter about that. And here in the 41st minute, West Ham have a chance here. Mikel Antonio is going to dink it over to Declan Rice, who hits it first time into the bottom corner of the goal. And we do go 1-0 down against West Ham. Declan Rice, Mr. West Ham, the captain in uh, in front of his home fans, scores against us. But we're going to keep going, hopefully score a goal, get back into this game. Come on, uh, Bournemouth. I nearly said West Ham then. But it is half-time. We're going to make a sub and um, I'm going to bring Ake on because I've signed him and I keep forgetting to play him. I keep forgetting him to put him on the team, so I'm going to have to start him soon, if I remember to put him in. But next episode, I am I will remember, trust me, I will. Because it's uh, getting a bit annoying now that I just keep forgetting and his morale's going down and stuff. We did score and the recording's cut off, but it's 1-1 and we do have another chance here in the 68th minute. Dom Solanke to get his second of the game, his 17th goal of the season, and he does. That's where that game ends. As I said, it's a jam-packed episode. we got four games, so I want to get through it quick. I'm going to show you little highlights, but we are going to see this game against Brighton, hopefully get the win. And we do. Lingard and Solanke scored. Um, you love to see it. That's another win under our belt, two in a row, and we are up to sixth place, as you can see there. Sixth place, West Ham just are. West Ham just gone above us after winning, but we are in the driver's seat at the moment in the league. Seventh, that is European football, I think that's Conference League, depending on who wins the FA Cup and stuff. But yeah, we're going to jump straight into this game against Villa at Villa Park. Obviously, we played them first game of the season and we lost like 4 0 or something. They tore us apart. Lacazette was too good. We couldn't defend him. Hopefully, it's not the same situation this time. But yeah, let's get um, straight into it. And literally, as I said about Lacazette, Villa get a chance here, and it's the man himself who's going to score, uh, Alexandra Lacazette. We just can't defend him whenever we play him, and it's really annoying because he's not that good on FIFA anymore. He used to be, but he's just a bit dead now. But we do get a chance here. David Brooks puts into the top corner of the goal to make it level at Villa Park, 1-1. We're hoping that we can pull this back and win the game now. Come on, the Cherries. I think we can win it. And we do end the game against Villa. We lose. Xbox is pissing me off now because I'm getting the clips of Xbox from the games and it's not recording like some of the goals that happened. Villa did score and it was Lacazette again. And uh, we do lose 2-1 to Villa, which is an ideal. They do go above us in the table, I'm pretty sure, because they were like a point below us. There might have been three points, actually. I don't know. I'm not too sure, but we'll see in a second. But we do have another game against Manchester United. That, um, that will be a tough one. And, um, yeah, 
let's just get straight into it. Yeah, Villa have gone above us. But I'm kind of annoyed that these clips aren't saving it. The video is just going to be ruined. This is kind of a write-off video. So don't watch this one if you're seeing this right now. Don't watch the rest of it because it's just a bit... It's just not very good. All right, so we're at Old Trafford. Bournemouth versus Man United. We're hoping to beat them. They're at the top of the league. So they are a pretty good side in career mode, unlike in real life. But it's going to be a tough one. Ronaldo, Rashford, all good in FIFA. They got Luis Alberto. That's got a weird sign, and I think, but yeah, let's just get stuck into them and hopefully get the win. I think, look, literally, this this was going to be the end of the video, but it's five minutes in, so I might add two more games or one more game because it's just a bit of a short video and it's just a bit shit. And uh, yeah, so hopefully, let's get the win here. And Man United do score here through Ronaldo, but it did cut off literally as he scored. But I got the celebration and stuff, so it's fine. I can't remember if I left the replay on or not. Yeah, I think I did because it cut off. Um, so yeah, they're just playing it round us. They are. They were really good to be fair. Like there was nothing we could have done. They're uh, hard to play against, and it is one nil to United. Cristiano Ronaldo in the league. They are top of the league, uh, so it's going to be a tough one. But let's just try and get the win or even draw. And not long after, Rashford scores in the eleventh minute. We nearly, we nearly uh, won the ball, I reckon, with that tackle. I put him in Lloyd Kelly. It was, clo it was a close one, but we do uh, concede and we do lose the game. There was literally no way we were getting past this defence. It was just it was impossible. I don't know how it was so hard. So I just jumped to a result. And it's literally, this video is about six minutes, seven minutes. So I'm going to add another game in because I have not recorded it for the next episode. So it just means there's going to be like one less, one less episode in the year. Uh, one, one less game in the next episode. Which is uh, not too bad. It just means an extra game in this one. So yeah, let's just uh, get into it. And we are back at the Vitality, the fortress where we belong. Where we're going to win against Arsenal here. Who we are playing to end the episode off. Because I didn't think this episode was long enough. But yeah, let me tell you now. This F this game is a bang. This game was so good to play. Like like usually like career games aren't that fun. They're just a bit boring. But this one was actually fun to film and play, to be fair. So let's just get straight into it and you'll see what happens. And in the first minute, Arsenal have the ball in our half. Ben Yedda plays it across to James Madison, who's going to get it to Smith at the back post, who finishes it. Woodman gets beat at his front post. That is where he's like... Uh, that's where where he can't like defend his front post. He's always scoring off the front post. But not long after, about 20 minutes later, Jesse Lingard squares it to Camwell, who finishes it into that bottom corner. He's going to knee slide and makes it 1-1. He's actually been underrated this season. I gave him a lot of stick at the start of the series as well. But he's been playing well this um, season. And, yeah, he could persuade me to buy him next season. You never know. Arsenal get another chance here. James Madison scores, puts it into the top corner of the goal. He's been good for them, to be fair. And here, David Brooks, he gets injured. It's what we didn't want to happen, but it has happened. And there's nothing we can do about it. So Frank Ribery's going to come on. And I don't know how I feel about him playing all these games remaining. That in Well, Brooks is injured. Depending on how bad the injury is, Ribery will be playing. But um, Ribery comes on. Instant impact, plays it to Lingard, who takes a touch round the defender and smashes it into the top corner of the goal. I don't know why, but it always seems that Lingard scores against Man United, whether it was for against Man United, against Arsenal, whether he's playing for United or West Ham. Always seems like he does. But then uh, Ar Arsenal get another chance, and Freddie Woodman. Look at that for a save. Look at the replay here now. It's so good. I don't understand how he got back, recovered that. He saved it with like his armpit nearly. Puts it out for a corner and keeps us in the game. Jesus, that was so clutch from him. He's been and Bakayo Saka scores for Arsenal. Well, he doesn't score. He squares it. And they go 3-2 uh, up. We're playing well. We're playing well. It's just our defence as usual. It's weak. Ben Yedda scoring against us. The rat from FIFA 20. But we're going to make some uh, subs here. We're going to bring just... Oh, I've got hiccups. Just going to bring Nathan Ake on. Because I keep forgetting to put him in the starting lineup. Whenever he plays, he plays well. I just forget to put him in. But um, yeah, we'll remember next episode. But yeah, it is 3 2 to Arsenal. And Todd Cantwell receives the ball from kickoff. And he's going to drive at the Arsenal players. He gets through one, he gets through the other. Bosh, bosh, bosh. 
and he's uh, through for his second goal of the game, rifles it into the corner, top corner of the net, and he celebrates in front of the uh, fans. He's been so sick for us. He's on a hat trick as well. Scores one more, got a hat trick. His first hat trick for the club. And see, the second place saw a hat trick for me. I know Lingard scored the first one. I'll be surprised if Solanke hasn't scored one, but we'll have a look. But uh, Cantwell puts us level against the Arsenal. Come on. And we've got the ball with Ribery here. He's driving forward. He sees Cantwell running. Plays a lovely ball over the top. He chests it down. He's through him. And he's on a hat-trick. Can Campbell finish it? Yes, he can. He scored his hat-trick for Bournemouth against Arsenal. What a player he is. What a player he's been in the series. So underrated. We've given him a lot of stick, but he's turned it around. And he's playing so well for us. And, uh, yeah, he's uh, it's on my mind. I don't know whether to get a new left winger next season or re-sign Campbell because, obviously, he's on loan. So it's a hard decision. But he puts his head against Arsenal. Hopefully, we can hold out and get the win. And in the 88th minute, we think the game is over. Thomas Partey gets on the, on the edge of the box and hits a rocket and equalises late on in the game. Oh, we, I thought we had won. But um, just more heartbreak. We always conceded in the last minute. It happened against Arsenal last time. We lost. It happened against uh, Thingy Nottingham Forest. It's happened quite a few times this season. But yeah, the game seems to be over. Todd Cantwell is on the ball. He's going to get past one. He's going to get past uh, Tommy Ashu and he's through on goal. He just needs to finish it now. Todd Cantwell puts it into the bottom corner of the net to score his fourth of the game and makes it 5-4 to Bournemouth in the 92nd minute against Arsenal. That is how it's done. Late drama and it's going our way for once. You love to see it. Todd Cantwell with the hat-trick against Arsenal. Scoring four goals. What a player. What a performance. Huge respect. And yeah... <laughs> That's how it's done, lads. It's a huge win for us on our season if we want to get European football. And that is the end of the episode on that note. So if you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned because there's not long left until the second season where hopefully we'll be playing European football. There is the man, Todd Cantwell, who scored the hat-trick. But make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.